Hey guys, welcome to another awesome video. If you have decided CCNA certification is for you, you have come to the right place. In today's video, my goal is to go deep into the Cisco certification topics. So you have a pretty good idea of what you're signing up for. With that, let's roll the intro. Today, we'll get into CCNA exam topics. So let's Google that. Click on the very first link on Cisco Learning Network. Go ahead and download the exam topics in a PDF format. And I will go ahead and give you a detailed walkthrough. Looking at all the topics here of the exam, if you have never taken a Cisco exam before, a couple of things to keep in mind. A 120 minute exam, so that's two hours. You roughly get um, around a minute and a half to two minutes per question. It depends how many questions you end up getting in your exam. And it's an adaptive exam, which means it intelligently detects how you're answering the questions and then presents you the questions accordingly. Now, that's not to say that it's designed to make you suffer, but rather that you need to be prepared well ahead of time so you can actually do a great job on the exam. Let's go ahead and um, scroll down and look at the topics here. So the very first topic in the exam is the network fundamentals. 1.1, this whole section right here is about network devices. So things like routers, switches, APs or access points, firewalls, uh, different type of endpoints like laptops, desktops, tablets, and servers. Right below that, 1.2 is a network architecture and design. So here we get into the two-tier architecture, spine leaf. Um, underneath that is the different types of cabling and media. So this would be uh, things like copper cabling versus fiber optic cabling, for example, um, Ethernet, power over Ethernet, things of that nature. Section 1.5 is the layer 4 of the OSI model. So we'll, I'll cover OSI in detail. You'll get to learn about that there. Section 1.6 and 1.7 is about IPv4 addressing I will go in excruciating amount of detail into IPv4, so I got you covered there. We'll then get into IPv6, big topic. It's becoming very relevant because we are running out of IPv4 addresses uh, when it comes to the publicly available IP addresses are concerned. Uh, so we'll get into IPv6 to help you understand how that works and for you to be ready. When your company is ready to go ahead and deploy IPv6, you're ready and you're able to provide that value to your company. Section 1.10 uh, gets to talk about how you can figure IP addressing on different type of uh, machines like Windows machine or Mac operating system. Section 1.11 will get into wireless. So we'll cover radio frequency, SSID, different Wi-Fi channels, the basics of Wi-Fi. Section 1.12 is all about virtualization. And this is virtualization 101, but at a super high level. This is a very, very deep topic. 
you can actually go ahead and spend the next five to 10 or even 15 years of your life going deep into virtualization. That's how big this topic is. Like most of the cloud providers and, and everything else that's happening in the industry right now is built around virtualization. And that has also accelerated the automation. I'll get into those details as, as I continue to cover different topics. And the final section in the very first section of this exam is the switching concept. So we'll talk about like Mac address table and Mac learning. That uh, pretty much wraps up the first section. And just so you know, this section is about 20% of the overall exam. So about one fifth of the exam is dependent on network fundamentals. And these are the key elements that you need to know and be aware of to be successful. Keep in mind guys, this these exams are designed by Cisco to help you become a world-class engineer. So you actually know how to be an engineer. You just don't have a theoretical knowledge, but you actually have practical knowledge. That being said, let's uh, talk about section two now. Section two is another 20%. Section 2.1, all of these different sections here until 2.5 are primarily layer two technologies within the OSI model. 2.6, all these sections below, all wireless. Moving on to section three. I believe this is the biggest chunk of the exam. That's 25% is all IP connectivity. This is basically layer three of the OSI model. Um, and then routing, OSPF routing, OSPF is a vendor neutral protocol that you can use to be able to configure your network devices. What does that mean? So if you happen to have Cisco and Juniper in your organization, you can run OSPF as a routing protocol and exchange routes. And it should work like a charm regardless of the vendor because OSPF is an open standard. So we'll talk through those details as I cover that. And section 3.5 is the first hop redundancy protocol. It's things like HSRP and VRRP. Moving on, section four is 10% of the exam. This is called IP services. And here we'll cover things like NAT, NTP, DNS, and DHCP. SNMP, QoS or quality of service, uh, remote access into the devices using uh, via SSH, TFTP and FTP um, in, in terms of how we can upgrade iOS images on our devices. Section five, security fundamentals. This is about 15% of the exam. And this is pretty much all what I would lump together as security 101. So these will be very basic security elements that you need to have under your belt to be able to understand more advanced security later at a CCNP level. Section six, this is the last section of the CCNA exam and it's all about automation and programmability. Now this topic guys, I can tell you right now is super hot in the industry. There's a lot going on in the industry around automation. A few years ago, there was a big fear that had been instilled in the hearts of network engineers on a global scale because people thought they're gonna lose their jobs once automation became a reality and that hasn't happened. And this will not happen. As a matter of fact, we'll continue to need more and more network engineers over time because this is a type of job that you cannot outsource. You can outsource software development to other parts of the world, but you cannot outsource network management because the routers and switches and all the physical stuff still has to be there to be able to allow companies to allow their employees to connect to the network and, and get the job done. Coming back to section six here, we'll get into things like um, controller-based networking. Um, this is the idea of centralizing the management of LAN and WAN 
technologies. It's a paradigm shift. It's a new era in the world of networking. It's very, very exciting. So I'll go ahead and cover that. We'll then get into things like overlay versus underlay and fabric. Very important concepts to understand. Control plane and data plane, including the different type of northbound and southbound APIs. I'll also cover Cisco DNA Center, which is part of SDA or Software Defined Access. This is, once again, a new paradigm within the LAN technology that kind of revolutionalizes the way you deploy switches and access points and wireless LAN controllers and all that within your environment. It's really interesting and intriguing. We'll get into those details. We'll then uh, get deeper into APIs and we'll also talk about different automation tools like Puppet, Chef, and Ansible that we can use to automate the deployment and configuration of our routers using scripting. This is the, the way of the land these days. This is where things are going. And finally, how to look at a JSON encoded data and be able to understand what that means. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Hey guys, thank you for watching today's video. As you may know, I'm fairly new to YouTube. So if you could do me a huge favor and drop down in the comment below any type of content you would like me to cover in the future videos. And I would love to take that feedback and create content that is relevant to you so you can go out there and crush it. Hope you liked today's video. If you did, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.